This video is sponsored by Beam Jobs. In this video, I'm gonna break down the five most important rules for writing an incredible software engineering resume. These tips help me get interviews at companies like Amazon, Meta, and Shopify. And if you follow them, you'll drastically increase your chances of getting a job at one of these companies. Rule number one is that no one cares about your formatting. Let go of all the fancy colors, styling, and margins, and keep it as simple as possible. Here's the problem. A lot of people base their resumes off of examples they find online. And the problem with these examples is that they're formatted such that you, as a viewer, as an applicant, think they look good. Not a recruiter, but you because they want you to think it looks good and then click on their website. And that's why they often have tons of colors, formatting, and spacing. Just do a quick Google search for resume examples and you'll see exactly what I mean. Every single resume has some sort of artistic design to it and they're just trying to get you to click on it. And while that might look good to you as a viewer, all it does is distract from your core message, which is your skills and experience. Hiring managers see thousands of resumes and all nice formatting does is make them reject you faster. A pretty resume is like someone wearing theater or stage makeup. Sure, from a distance they look pretty good, but as soon as you get closer, it just starts to become a little bit off-putting and distracting. They look like a clown. It's just too much going on. This is why you should stick to simple and plain formatting. This is my resume. Notice how there's no colors, no formatting, no borders, no nothing. It's simply a vehicle to deliver the relevant information, which is my experience and skills. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Rule number two of improving your resume is to lead with a relevant experience. Resumes usually have five sections. Your background information, your experience, your skills, your education, and your projects. Of this list, experience is by far the most important. To an employer, if someone has already done the job before, it instantly gives them a huge stamp of credibility. That's why when you go to apply to a job, the experience requirement is the first thing listed underneath the job description. This is why I actually have my education at the bottom of my resume. Sure, I went to a decent university, but that's not the most impressive part of my resume by a long shot. The most impressive part of my resume is the fact that I'm a full-time software engineer and that I've done five software engineering internships. I attribute most of my success to the fact that I have so much software engineering experience, not the school I went to or the classes I took. Now, this creates a problem in a lot of computer science students because frankly, they just don't have a lot of software engineering experience, especially if you're a freshman or a sophomore. And that's why one of my biggest pieces of advice to new students is to get as much software engineering experience as fast as possible. I was doing unpaid internships as a sophomore in high school, as a 15 year old, just so I could fill out this experience portion of my resume with something actually useful. Rule number three is that no one cares about your hobbies. So my company's hiring right now and I was looking over the shoulder of one of my teammates who was flipping through the resumes. And as I was looking at them, I noticed a few resumes which had things listed like Friends is my favorite TV show. Or I love Dungeons and Dragons, it's my favorite board game. And let me remind you, this is not a Tinder profile, it's a resume. Someone legitimately put down their favorite TV show and board game on their software engineering resume. I wanted to grab this person and shake them. Never put information like that on your resume. We've been sold this lie that companies care about you as a person that they want you to be a three-dimensional person with all these different hobbies like baking and chess and cooking. And sure, while it is nice to work with someone who makes kombucha on the side, you should never add that as part of your resume. At the end of the day, a company cares about whether you're someone who can consistently deliver results. And as long as you're not an asshole, it should be fine. You don't need to add any kind of personal interests or hobbies or whatever instruments you play. My YouTube channel has 25,000 subscribers and all I talk about here is tech and software engineering, and I don't even have it on my resume because it doesn't directly show my software engineering skills. When you add your hobbies to your resume, all it makes the recruiter think is that you're just trying to fluff up your resume and you have no relevant experience. When you add things like your football team, it's a huge red flag. Again, at my company, I witnessed people getting rejected because they added random facts and it took away from their experience. So don't do it, it's pretty simple. This leads me to my next rule, which is to include the most outrageous numbers you can possibly defend. Stick with me here. One thing people don't realize is that the person reading your resume is a mom. It's your neighbor who baked you cookies at one time. It's Tina whose kid is on the elementary school soccer team. Sundar Pichai and Satya Nadella are not reading your resume. People are so terrified of getting called out for what they put down, they'll make their resume extremely underwhelming. Let me read you the Amazon portion of my resume. Led the design and development of five new global API attributes on the catalog distribution services, CDS team improving 30,000 plus titles on Prime Video using Java and AWS. Now, did I actually do that? Well, yeah, technically I did. 
I did work on a backend project at Amazon Prime Video, which affected every single title on the platform. Now, is it as impressive as it sounds? No, the recruiters reading your resume don't care about every little technical detail you write down. At the end of the day, they spend five seconds looking at it, making sure you have some kind of experience and you're a little bit qualified, that's it. Like I said, Steve Wozniak is not reading your resume. It's Melissa from the hair salon. So juice up your resume to seem as dramatic and revolutionary as possible. Instead of you fixed a bug in the app, you managed a complex bug fix in the shop cache backend that prevented campaigns associated with disabled shops from being displayed to users. Users, optimizing shopping experience for a hundred plus million registered app users. Now we're talking. A good way to do this is one, always start with an action verb and two, include large numbers. I always lead my bullet points with a nice action verb. Some good ones for engineering are developed, pioneered, executed, spearheaded, implemented and migrated. Oh, that's a good one right there. You can look these up, resume action verbs, and don't use the same one twice. Also, almost every section of my resume has a large number tacked onto it. People love large numbers psychologically because it makes your points seem specific, impressive, and grand. So try to add a large number to at least one bullet point for every experience listed. Now, I'm not saying lie in your resume. I would never write down something like, I invented ChatGPT because I would instantly get found out in two seconds and then perma ban from the company. What I am saying is that you should be as outrageous as you can defend. Keyword, defend. You will eventually have to talk about your resume to an engineer, so make sure you can adequately justify everything you put down in detail. Before I discuss our last rule for writing an incredible software engineering resume, I want to take a quick pause to talk about our first sponsor on the channel. It's all because of you guys. Thank you to Beam Jobs for sponsoring this video. If you like everything I said so far and you want to take your resume to the next level, Beam Jobs is the way to do it. It's the best resume builder out there with over 2 million resumes created in the last few years. And people who have used Beam Jobs have been hired at companies like Google, Meta, Stripe, and much, much more. You can choose from a bunch of pre-existing templates. I particularly like the professional one. It sticks with my principle from earlier about avoiding any kind of fancy styling or colors. You can either upload your current resume or build one from scratch in the platform. Even better, if you upload your resume, it will use AI to give you a resume score and give you points on how to improve it. So I just uploaded my resume and it gave me the score of 93, which is pretty good, but it gave me the tip of avoiding filler words, which could take my resume even further. So if you're serious about landing your first software engineering internship or job, give Beam Jobs a try using the link in the description. It'll truly take your resume to the next level. Now, back to the video. Rule number five is to pump your resume full of technical jargon. Something people don't realize is that, especially at big companies who get thousands of applications, Karen doesn't even look at your resume. First, a bot does. And the main thing the bot does is it scans your resume for keywords like JavaScript, AWS, and Python, etc., and only pushes your resume forward if you have the right keywords listed. This is why you want to add the maximum number of technical terms you can remotely defend. Now again, don't pull up some random shit out of nowhere, okay? Don't write a language you've never touched before, but do this exercise. Literally think about each one of your experiences and then write down every single language you can think of. Everything you worked with, the technical stack, the architecture, the framework. Just write it all down and then pump your resume full of those words. I once knew this guy who figured out that he could fill his resume with thousands of auto-generated technical terms, but then make the text white. So the bot would always flag his resume to move on to the next round. But when an engineer looked at his resume, there was nothing wrong in there. And it actually worked for him. He got the first interview so much more often. Now, I'm not saying you should do that, but what I am saying is that because a bot is looking at your resume, make sure you maximize the number of technical jargon on there that you can defend. The thing about a resume is that you don't spend every day of the week thinking about it. It's like an afternoon every six months. So it's worth going to a cafe, spending three hours on a Tuesday, really working on your resume, making it great, because once you make it awesome, you'll drastically improve your chances of getting a job. That little amount of effort can make a massive difference in the long term, so it's well worth investing in and putting time and effort. If you're interested in my ultimate guide to landing your very first software engineering internship or job, you can sign up to my email newsletter in the description. You can just put your email in, it's completely for free, you can unsubscribe at any time, and I'll send you my ultimate checklist to landing an internship or job. Also check out my Instagram, it's at Amon Manazer. I'm starting to post more often there about lifting and singing and things outside of the world of tech and software engineering. So if you're interested in my life, please consider following there. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Good luck to you on your resume, and I will see you in the next video.